What exactly is speech that, quote, edges toward violence, unquote? What exactly are, quote, actions predicated on violent talk, unquote? In the end, it is whatever she decides it to mean. This is what happens when you have a junta running a nation instead of a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Now, this gets even worse. I told you yesterday, I, I did it facetiously, that the family of the monster woman who did the shootout was going to sue. Did I tell you that yesterday? They went and found a shyster lawyer. By the way, this lawyer, in my opinion, should be arrested. You know, we have such an insane legal system that a lawyer could take on a case of a woman who knowingly shot up a clinic like this, killed people in cold blood, and they find a shyster lawyer who's going to now sue the police. Only in America. Loretta Lynch ought to look into David Chelsea, in my opinion. Listen to the lawyer. I warned you this would happen in this sick nation of ours where the lawyers are out of control. Listen to clip four. There's a lot of disconnects, and there's a lot of unknowns, and there's a lot of things that, quite frankly, don't add up. She was never involved in shooting. She's probably about 90 pounds, so it's, it's unlikely she could even carry a weapon or wear some type of a vest or, or do any of this. Um, where the couple was found, from what I understand, is that they were handcuffed, lying face down in this truck, uh, shot up. Um, th there's a lot of things that just don't make sense. I told you. I told you you were going to see marches by, uh, uh, led by Ayatollah Sharpton in the next few days saying Muslim lives matter. Watch. Wait till you see the insanity of this nation. Wait till you, you know, don't shoot hands up. Watch. Innocent women. I told you they're going to say they were just driving around and they were attacked by the police. It wasn't them. Watch. They didn't really do it. They got the wrong couple. They were just on a honeymoon ride. Wait. You'll see how insane the country is. And wait till you see the compliant libs in the media go along with the narrative. When you see a wolf blitzer spill all over himself with tears for these two. Wait, you'll see. You'll see how sick the country really is, the dementia of the nation. This is beyond dementia. This is an autoimmune disease that's incurable. This is the lawyer now. They went and found a shyster lawyer, in my estimation. Listen to the next clip if you want to get sick. Five. I'm just, I'm just telling you straight out that... It doesn't it doesn't make sense. It looks like if if somebody had military training or something. Yes, but there was none of that. And and this person was not aggressive. Why don't you tell that, David? David, where did you come from? For, were you born from parents? Why don't you go say that to the victims families? You piece of garbage. You you low life. You is this what you studied law for to take what everyone saw happen in real time with their own eyes? And twist the truth like this? Is this what lawyers do? This is the country we live in? Was this man born of woman? Was he created somewhere? How could a man even say a thing like this? How could he disgrace the victims like this? How could he disgrace the police who risk their lives like this? How? How? In a country like ours where truth are lies and lies are truth? We're up is down and north is south, when east is west, when a junta is called a government. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Why do fools fall in hate is what I want to know. Why didn't someone do a rock and roll song called Why Do Fools Fall Into Hate? I'm looking inside the home of the terrorists. You know, they let the, uh, how the FBI let this happen? The reporters rushed into the apartment of the shooters. And there's pictures I can't believe what I'm looking at. I mean, the crime scene is tampered with. They can't be found guilty now. They're dead, of course, but they can't be found guilty because the crime scene was tampered with. The spice rack, meat cleaver, uh, Quran, coloring book, Islamic manners activity book. By the Islamic Foundation, Masha Allah, uh, colorful activity book for children on Islamic manners. Really? <laughs> Good one. Um, children's book in Arabic and English sit in a closet on top of piles of clothes. Literature, Islamic books in Arabic are seen on a shelf inside the apartment of Saeed Farouk and Tashnif Malik. They had called home until Wednesday when they were shot by police after carrying out a massacre. A sticker referencing Allah is displayed on a dresser inside the home of the husband and wife shooters. Praise be to Allah who relieved me from the suffering and gave me relief. That's nice. I wonder if it's giving anyone relief uh, 
uh, the families though, that they executed. A plaid man's shirt hangs in a walk-in closet inside the home of a shooting suspect, Saeed Farouk. No wire hangers. I, I don't like wire hangers in my closet. I only would. My family knows that. I throw out the hangers from the cleaner immediately. It's from when I was poor, we had wire. Now I have to have wood. No wire hangers. God, let's see. This is stupid. What a country I'm living a hole in the ceiling is visible in the couple's bedroom closet inside. The media tour of the apartment was preceded by an hours-long <coughs> FBI search. God! A tin of powdered milk sits on a shelf. Tashfin Malik pledged allegiance to ISIS just before the pair launched a terror attack. <coughs> Rem oil. Oh, here we go. Remington oil. An open can of Rem gun oil sits in a bedroom closet inside the home of shooting suspect Saeed Farouk. Uh, an unknown woman is pictured in the passport photos inside the home of the suspects. She has not been linked to the attacks, comma, yet, period. Joking. And let's see who's grandma. Oh, passport-sized photos of an identified woman in a headscarf sit on a sheet of paper filled with Arabic handwriting. Who's this doll? This grandma? But they dropped off the infant at grandma's house? A paperback Quran is pictured on a table in the gunman's home. Now, that could be, you know, this picture alone could be seen as insightful. Loretta Lynch, our attorney general, said that actions predicated on violent talk towards Muslims will be prosecuted. Edges towards violence. A, and so what? It's the Daily Mail is showing a paperback Quran in a story about terrorism. You could say that that's uh, edging towards violence. I think they should arrest everyone at the Daily Mail in America for showing a paperback Quran. They're linking the Quran to this, sh this shooting, aren't they? During Friday's impromptu media tour, they should look into them. Australian Beer Company. Wait, it was his first live look inside attacker's apartment. A screen grab shows what appears to be the driver's license of Saeed Farouk's mother, Rafia Sultana Farouk. Uh-oh. <clears throat> How long did it take her to get that driver's license? Try to get a driver's license in California now if you're a white male over the age of 60. See how long you have to wait to the Department of Mexican Voting, the DMV. This is crazy. What a country. Journalists inspect family photos inside the suspect's home. A child's bathroom toy can be seen on the right. Inside the suspect. How did the journalists get in there? It's journalists. Look at the Schmendricks with the iPhones. They're touching evidence. They're rifling through passport photos, pictures, toothbrushes, Korans. They're touching them. Where's the where are the fearless where's the fearless five from the FBI? A half-eaten slice of pizza or flatbread was left resting on top of a washing machine inside Malik and Farouk's home. I'm surprised the journalists, given the cheap nature of their profession, they didn't eat the pizza. I mean, there's a microwave there; they could have reheated it and shared it amongst themselves. They're all communists. No, why didn't they just heat up the pizza or the flatbread and, and share it amongst themselves? Wait, let's see what a, a book on prayer. <laughs> is seen inside the home. Saeed Farik had previously been described as a devout Muslim, but his claim to develop ties with radical and stopping attending his mosque. Common mistakes regarding prayer by Sheik whatever. Common mistakes regarding prayer. How come they're so fanatical, terrorists, about how they pray and what they eat and what they do, but they're not particularly pick, uh, picky on who's, whose head they shoot off? How could anyone who's religious do a thing like this? I don't believe this. I believe this the whole thing is a setup. I don't even believe that they were Muslims. I, I agree with 100% with the liberals. Muslims didn't do this. Devout Muslims would never, ever slaughter innocents like this. It's against their religion. Anyone who says so is violating the law. Oh, there's the Schmendrick, Todd, with the fake beard. Todd, uh, whatever his name is, from NBC. The way he grew a beard to, to look intelligent. Todd, what is his name? Todd, I don't know his name. Todd Thug? Up Chuck Todd? I don't know his name. The guy who gave, grew a beard in order to look intelligent? Yeah, NBC News allowed inside attack his apartment. I thought he was a journalist who interviews the president. He should have stopped this fellow journalist from breaking into the apartment. ISIS connection. Real Friday, the Tashfin Malik photo. No Why is there no photo available? Why? Because she wore a full burqa during a photo session. Very smart. What country in the world permits this to go on? What sane nation? Answer, not this one, because this is not a sane nation. Anyway, you get the picture. That's topic number uh, one or two on the Savage Nation. 
Topic one is Bill O'Reilly lying, in my opinion. We're not posting any photos on my site, and we're not posting a photo of the alleged shooter's wife because we don't know what she looks like, because she was in a burqa. That's why they wear burqas, some of them. Oh, yeah, it's well known. Let me ask you something. I have a question for you. If you were coming into a fine nation like ours to do harm, and you wanted to never be photographed, tell me what you would wear. A, a mini skirt. B, a, a full body covering saying it's my religion, you can't even look at my eyes. And they say, oh, yeah, oh, sure, oh, cause, oh, sure, we'll take a picture of the black cloak over your eyes. And we're saying that, yes, we're a sensitive, na multi-religious nation. Oh, no, we don't want to violate your religious freedom. Oh, my God, who's in charge of this country? What a country we're living in with a ruling junta. Look up the word junta before it's used Monday on everyone else's show. No, just search for the word junta. I'm going to do it for you. I'm going to Google. I know what the word means. It applies to our government under Barry. Junta. Definition. Junta. A military or political group that rules a country after using, after taking power by force. Well, okay, that's not really what this is. Barry didn't take power by force. He took it uh, as a result of the media. Two. A deliberative or administrative council in Spain or Portugal. That's an historical translation. That doesn't apply. <clears throat> junta. Definition of junta by Marion Webster. Let's see if I'm wrong or right. Uh, junta. A military group controlling a government. Well, that's very interesting. A military... Wait a minute. Full definition of junta. A council or committee for political or governmental purposes. Especially a group of persons controlling a government. Especially after a revolutionary seizure of power. If we're not going through a revolutionary seizure of power where this junta does what it wants without any checks or balances by anybody or anything. Okay. Spanish from feminine of junto. Join from Latin junctus. Past participle of junger to join. Interesting. Other government and politics terms. Agent provocateur. <laughs> Agitprop. Cabal. Egalitarianism, federalism, and hegemony. Interesting. Learn more about junta. I think we'll use the word hunter because it can apply. I believe it applies to this government. It is a hunter. Of course they didn't seize power through military force. They seized power through, through the force of the threats of departments within their government. Everyone's afraid of them. We're all afraid of them. I'm terrified as I speak. I just don't sound it. I'm on the front lines as though we've been occupied and there's an occupying government running the country. I feel as though I'm in Edward R. Murrow during the, uh, the siege of Britain. Do you know that every day when I get up on this radio show, I feel as though I'm Edward R. Murrow and the Nazis are, are trying to break the, the walls of Britain down and take over the country. I think we're this close to losing the nation. That's the urgency you hear in my voice. That's how I feel about this government, this Hunta. I feel that this Hunta is on the other side of the, of the, of the aisle. And I don't mean Republican or Democrat. I think they're way over on the other, other, other side of the other aisle. Every speech, every day, is defending the indefensible. Every day is attacking patriots. Every day is watering down the military. Every day is taking the truth and making it into lies. Every day, it's more and more looks, it more and more looks like a hunter to me. But okay, I'm not uh, up Chuck Todd. I'm not uh, Jake Tapwater. Those are the uh, those are the good boys. They're the good boys. They get invited into the White House to light the Hanukkah menorah and the Christmas tree. Come on in, boys. Come on in now. Come on in with the dogs. Come on in. We're going to have a lighting ceremony. Get your cameras out, boys. You have about two, three minutes, and you'll be given the cookies and the milk, and you leave. Go ahead, boys. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in, Jakey. Come on, Jakey. You can come in now. Woof, woof. Come on. Woof, woof, woof. Come on, Jakey. Woof, woof, woof. NBC now. Up Chuck Todd. Woof, woof, woof. Yeah, that's a good boy. Wag your tail. Come on in. Wag the old tail, Todd. You're taken very seriously in your hometown. Yeah. <laughs> Hometown hero, unlike me, I'm vilified. I'm vilified with my PhD from Berkeley, vilified by Queens College, vilified by every university I ever went to because I guess I'm too honest. Yeah, that's the way it is. Then we got the O'Reilly story. I guess I'll do it again because I'm sure he's listening by now. Hey, Bill, how are you? Having a nice Friday, are you, my lad? Well, Bill, I think you pulled a big one on the, on the public. Yes, my lad, you're going on the air when? In about 45 minutes, my lad? Well, O'Reilly has pulled a Brian Williams.
And I believe he should step down for life.